Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, welcome to Paulette Christina. We are going to be getting into some autumn decor, some homemade applesauce, a homemade wreath, and all kinds of fun things here. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I'd love if you shared this with any family and friends as well. I do all things holidays here, cooking, cleaning, decorating, DIYs. We have a lot of fun and let's get right into it. I like to go shopping way ahead of time and get some ideas to see if I'm going to make something myself or if I'm going to buy it in the store. These wreaths, um, I found some that were $100 or even more than $100. And I realized that after I made this one and I compared it to another one that I liked a lot from Joanne Fabrics, I realized that I, I saved quite a bit of money and this was only about $20 in total. I used a straw wreath form. I bought it at Hobby Lobby for $6.99. Uh, any craft store has those. I believe they're cheaper than the branch wreath form. and then. They also have the wooden ones with the wooden balls. Those are nice too. This one I just decided I wanted uh, a little thicker and I just like the neutral shade of the straw wreath form. So I bought most of these picks at the Dollar Tree and I was really surprised. I mean, I got the leaves there. I mean, really everything except for some of the leaves and those, these pumpkins. I bought those at Hobby Lobby. And I also have, those are like these faux leather pumpkins. See the dark brown? I got those at Dollar Tree. I think those are the cutest things ever. They're so, so cute. I was just in there recently and it was stock full of picks flowers and all kinds of halloween stuff and they even started bringing out some christmas so i thought it would all be wiped out i've picked up a few things for halloween a while ago i was really surprised to see that it was stocked really well so with this these picks are made with wire like inside there's wire and so I just took each of my groups of flowers and things and I separated them onto my table. And with the flowers, I just had to take each stem and just bend it back and forth about five or six times until the wire kind of snapped on its own. Uh, you could use wire cutters, I couldn't find mine, so I just snapped them off I edited a lot of this. It took me a bit longer to do the wreath because the wire stems were too long. Make sure you trim yours to about three inches. Make sure you have a glue gun to use as well. It really helped me to glue the sunflowers and the pumpkins. You can find them at the 99 cent store, Dollar Tree, or any of the craft stores. So you may have, say, five sunflowers and seven or eight pumpkins, whatever it is, but you start with whatever pick you want to use. You see how many you have, and then you just want to make sure that you evenly distribute it on your wreath. See how I put this one on here? I hot glued it. Those were the faux leather pumpkins. I think I only had four of those. Typically, you it's good to use five is a good number, but they came in groups of four, and I didn't want it overcrowded because I had a lot of different picks. And I'm serious here. I literally paid about $20 for the whole entire wreath. Um, and I'm going to show you a picture of one that I really liked at Joanne Fabrics, although the picture doesn't do it justice, but it was a $100 wreath. And yes, I could have bought it recently for about $20 on sale, 
but these days you just don't know what you're going to find in the stores and I don't have a whole lot of time to just be shopping around all these different places and I knew I knew the look that I wanted and I mean I found these cotton pieces I thought they're so so cute and I got those at the Dollar Tree in fact they're stocked up again they have more of them and they're just the cutest things I thought that would add a neat little texture to this wreath and you want to have a mixture of textures and a, a mixture of colors I wanted it mainly neutral with a few pops of orange and a little bit of brown there but brown is kind of neutral too but the orange I do like the bright traditional you know Halloween orange I just do I think it's it's really um, I just love orange in the you know fall time the autumn time so it's kind of hard for me to remove it all uh, but that's just me you can do whatever you want uh, on here you can put those little mini corn on here with a hot glue gun or maybe with wire you could wrap it around um, <clears throat> you could do it with you know teal and all neutral or you know teal and white little pumpkins you could spray paint some of the pumpkins I mean you just have fun with it do whatever you want to do um, I really was happy with the way that it turned out so I would do it all over again if I had that chance you know if I could go back and decide whether I was going to do it or not and just buy the wreath that I saw at Joanne's I actually like this better than Joanne Fabrics and it has a lot more on it than that one did and then you see these feathers, they kind of look like, um, I don't know, they're kind of like a caramel color with the brown brown stripes across them. Um, I got those as well at the Dollar Tree. I just think they're so cute and they add a little bit, you know, a little bit of a flair. And there you go, I am finished. <laughs> So I love this Bath and Body Works candle. I think it's pumpkin waffles. So yummy. Um, I am refilling some of my airtight canisters here. And I'm just going to change the tags on them. Um, <clears throat> it's something simple that you can do to kind of switch out the colors and for holidays I got these tags at the Dollar Tree and I'm using some chalk markers and the tags do come with these little rope ties but you could tie it with ribbon or whatever you want um, I did have to go over it a few times with the chalk marker just to make sure that the color stood out and um, yeah so I'm just kind of tying it on here really easily didn't take long to do I'm just slowing this down a little bit so you can see how I put the rope through and kind of did that and then I'm just tying it on <laughs> yeah you like that okay so that's done and then these sponges as well um, I think I got those at the 99 cent only I think um, but they are fun and I always I know I'm that person I like to get sponges that kind of match the color of the season see my soap right up there to the top left I like to change the colors these I got at Hobby Lobby these clear labels I don't have a Cricut uh, so I am using these I loved those um, they were like $1.99 really cheap so I'm refilling our rice jar here i love that they're clear and they're just very aesthetically pleasing it also makes it really easy for my son and husband to find we don't have a whole lot of pantry space so this is perfect just showing you it doesn't take a lot to add some style and make things a lot more accessible <laughs>
I got this at Trader Joe's. It's a little mini cinnamon broom. It smells so good. Oh my goodness. So I'm just going to have it out in the kitchen. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to put it, but it smells really good with my candle. It's a pumpkin pecan waffles and my yummy apples. So there you go. It doesn't take a lot to really make things uh, look festive. I have some baking soda that I use for my sink to maintain it. This is above our stove. Uh, let me know which one you like better, the three ceramic pumpkins or the lighter peach color pumpkins. I think I like the one on the right better. And this autumn sign, I love that. Got it on clearance from Hobby Lobby as well as the leaves here in the corner. I think it just gives it a nice touch. All right, it's time to make homemade applesauce. We went apple picking not long ago and it was a really great time these are apples that we already had that I wanted to use the apples to the right are from apple picking they are called Glen seedling apples and they're super tart but just really yummy even better than Granny Smith but um, they told us how to pick apples um, of course you twist the apple but you lift the apple first and then you twist it and pull and they were really adamant about that because a lot of times if you just yank the apple off the branch you'll break the branch and they said it takes 30 years for a branch to fully grow back and these Glen seedling apples these trees are really old I don't know how old but they're very old so um, that was kind of interesting I didn't realize that you had to kind of lift up and twist but uh, yeah, you learn something new every day. And applesauce is a great way to use up apples that are not super crisp. Um, these, this is a mixture of like very new apples and some that are um, not as crisp. So just peeling these up. I'm not going to bore you with all of it. But I peeled about 16. I'm timesing the recipe by multiplying it by four because I'm going to freeze some and then bring some to a dinner with friends. I just have to run out so I put the apples in water so they wouldn't brown too much. It's really okay ultimately because you're going to be cooking them on the stove and they're going to brown up anyways. But now I am cutting up all the apples. I'm dicing them into medium cubes and I'm removing the seeds from the center. Make sure you get all of that. You don't want any hard parts in the applesauce. That would just not be a good texture. The apples are diced and ready to go into a medium to large pot. Put three cups of water in, two teaspoons of cinnamon. I would say start with no sugar. I am putting a cup of sugar in here for the recipe, and I've done that in the past. It tastes really good, but I forgot that we like it a little bit more tart. You can always add it in later while uh, it is still hot, uh, right after it's finished cooking. And you can taste and see if you, you know, want even a little bit more, a little more cinnamon. So cover up the pot and you want to cook on medium heat for 13 to 15 minutes. When that's finished, stir it for a moment and then you want to let it cool. I cooked quite a bit. I felt comfortable mashing it. I was pretty careful with it, but it could splash up and burn you um, if you're not so careful. But if you like it chunky, then use a potato masher. And if not, you can put it in a blender to make it a lot more smooth. I was really missing the tartness, so I added some lemon, fresh lemon juice, 
and I actually added about two to three lemons and a little bit of sea salt. And there you go, homemade applesauce. You can freeze it, it is so yummy. Thanks so much for joining me in this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. It helps me so much on my channel. And in the meantime, uh, why don't you check out my Halloween video from last year with some yummy pumpkin chocolate chip muffins and some other fun stuff while I am preparing a new video with some Halloween DIYs, more fall decor, and some yummy recipes. Can't wait to have you in the next one. Bye-bye.